Last year, you heard us talk about Palm, which led to many improvements across our products. Today, we are ready to announce our latest Palm model in production, Palm 2. Hi everybody and welcome to my YouTube. Today let's look at how to use the Palm API to access the Palm models. So the Palm API is the way that we're going to be making our request to the Palm models and then we'll be getting our response and do with it whatever we want. Palm 2 is Google's next generation large language model. The model is really different than anything that we've built before. Palm 2 is very good at math, at code, at uh, advanced reasoning, and then also at multilingual tasks like translation. The way that it was able to accomplish this was because it was trained on scientific and mathematical data. So right now, since the Palm API is still under preview, you need to first join the waiting list and Google will give you access. And once they give you access, you'll be able to access the Mecha suit, which is where you can you know, play around with some of the capabilities of this model. For example, you can chat with it, ask it some questions. But what we are interested in here is getting the API key because we want to be making requests to this model. So let's get to the notebook and see how we can interact with this model via an API. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to install this Google Generative AI package. So I've already installed it, but go ahead and install it. And once you have installed that, we have to import some relevant packages. So we need NumPy, we need this package that we just installed and we are going to import it as palm and then the next step let me actually run this cell the next step here is going to be to set our api key so what you do here is you use this configure function and you set your key so assuming you have access the key is somewhere here so you're going to say get key click on this key icon and i already have two keys here but i can create another one by clicking on generate api key and it'll take some time and i'll be able to copy my key from here so now i can copy this key and i can paste it here all right so let me run this cell as well to set my api key and then we can look at the models actually uh, so for example if you're going to do a generative task we can loop through the models and we only um, add the model to the list if it's um, a, gener a generative model so if i run this cell it should print the model that works on generative tasks and that is the text bison but we can look at all the models that i have by looping through the models and i'm printing the name of the model and the corresponding uh, method Palm 2 models deliver excellent foundational capabilities across a wide range of sizes. We have affectionately named them Gecko, Order, Bison, and Unicorn. So this is for chat. Text Bison is for text generation and the embedding Gecko is for generating word embeddings. We'll get to word embeddings later and I'll explain what they are. So let's see the first task which is text generation. So for this task you must have a prompt which is the question uh, that you want to ask the model and then you have to select the model. So we saw that we have the chat, the text and the word em the embedding rather. So for this task since we just wanted to complete a text complete a sentence we are going to use the text bison so the model will set it to text bison so you have to copy this the way it is here model slash text bison and then you also set the temperature the temperature is how random the model is going to be so if you set it to one that means the model is going to be very random and so if you run um, a request twice you might get two different answers if you set it to zero that means the model is going to be deterministic so you you'll be getting the same output every time you run it then we use the generate text function we pass in the model we pass in the prompt we pass in the temperature and then we also have this um, other parameter called maximum output tokens and uh, this one basically means how long you want your text to be so if i set it to, to for example 400 here it means the text will be long and if you are to count the, the tokens there will be 400 tokens in this case it is a hundred that means i don't want the text to be excessively long but you can make it shorter if you want to and then i also have something called candidate count so the candidate count means how many predictions do i want the model to return so i could just set it to one which means i just want one prediction 
or one line here but when i set it to two it's going to return two predictions okay so let's run this and see what happens so as you can see it says an apple a day keeps the doctor away so it completes this sentence the way we would expect and since this is random when i run it again it's possible that i can receive a different output a different response let's run it again and see and as you can see now the next the second output that it brought is excessively long and blah 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 i don't even want to read it but i just wanted to make sure you understand the temperature parameter here okay so now remember i said that the, we said the candidate count to two and so if we want to look at the candidates each one we say completion dot candidates it has um, a property uh, called candidates and then we look at the output if you want you can print the completion object and you see how it looks you you see how why we are indexing in so it's a list and index zero is the one that contains the first response and index two, index one contains the second response so if i print this it should it should show me both outputs so yeah so you have two outputs and you can set this to you know three four whatever you want so that is text completion and you know you can do things like what is this you ask it a question and response etc so now let's move on to the chat so the chat this would be something like what google bad does or what chat gpt does and in the in its simplest term you can give it a prompt so you use the chat function and you give it a prompt such as hello or like hi or anything you want to type here and it's going to give you a response and the text that the model responds with is found in a property called last so when we print last we should get a response from the model so it says hello how can i help you today so that's the response we get back and now let's say we want to respond to it and ask it a question or something like that so what we do is we, we get the the object the response object and we call the reply function on it and we pass in the question that we want to ask it if you don't use the reply function you are going to make a, a brand new chat and so it will not remember the conversation you already had with it so let's send this request and see so we're asking it who is the president of the united states of america so it says the current president of the united states of america is joe biden who was elected in 2020 took office blah 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 so it shows that it understands our question here and so we can go ahead and keep replying and asking it more questions when was he born and you know whatever you want to ask it but you know make sure to use the reply function otherwise it will not understand the he that you're talking about here because it doesn't remember what you talked about so joe biden was born in november 20th 1946 and he's 79 years all right so let's move on to the next part does he have so i'm going to stop this here and just move on to word embeddings you'll get the idea on how to chat with this model and how to reply so with this you can build an application that you know uses uses this you can build something like bard and or chat gpt so you can use it to build your own chatbot if you want all right so let's move on to word embeddings so first of all i explain what we what we are going to do and then i'll explain why we are doing it so as an example we have x and it says what do squirrels eat and that's the text we have and we want to fit it to fit this text into a model and the model should give us an array of numbers or a vector uh, something like this so this would represent the text we give it so every time we send it text or a string it should return an array of numbers both negative and positive so why do you want these numbers and uh, what do we use them for so word embeddings are used in applications such as document search recommender systems clustering algorithms etc so as an example here we have what do squirrels eat and we have one example here is and this example is nuts and then we have another example 
and this is just some weird text it says this morning i woke up i went to san francisco blah 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 this is not even a food so we know that the correct answer should be nuts but the model doesn't know that and for this example we use the embedding gecko model because that's the one that generates the word embeddings and we give it the text as well and we use the generate embedding function and what it returns is the word embeddings for the corresponding text x so this text up here what do squirrels eat and then we, are, we also have to generate embeddings for the words for the other text we want to compare it with so we generate embeddings for the for the clause text which is this one here and we also generate embeddings for the different text which is this one and so we have three row vectors or arrays and actually let me let me run this cell again and so when we start printing them here you can see that the embedding x is this one and it's going to be represented as an array of these floating point numbers and now we compute the dot product between the embeddings x which is this one and what we want to compare it with which is the one of the of the close one the nuts and so the dot product is going to what the what the dot product does is it multiplies each of these values with the corresponding value in the so the the corresponding values in the uh, in the other array and then it adds them up this times the corresponding value in index 0 plus this times the corresponding value index 1 until all the numbers are done and then it adds up everything and it generates just one number and that number is going to be between negative 1 and 1 so when we run this again so we get a value of 0 0.69 so whenever a number is positive it means these things are very they are related the higher the value for example 0 0.9 would say they are very very related and if for example if we run this with the same word so let's say we are computing distance between embedding x and embedding x that should give us one because this is the exact same word and so the embeddings are the same so let's try that out not exactly one but you can see it's very close 0 0.99999 which can be rounded up to one but when the words are very different this value here this value here is going to be very small and when it is zero it means that these two are not related at all when it's negative it means these are opposites so whatever you're trying to recommend if you're building a recommender algorithm it means it's very unlikely in fact it means that the person hates that product you're trying to recommend to them okay so let's compute the distance uh, the dot product rather for this other embedding or this text here the second text so when we run this again I already run this but if you run it again you see that it's still positive but it's smaller than this which means that this text here the close to x is indeed close to this one so now we know if you are for example matching animals and the food they eat the squirrels definitely eat nuts eat nuts as compared to this other text so the application of this would be in document search so for example if you're building a web browser and someone searches for something let's say best universities in the u.s you can imagine if you had all your text as word embeddings all the blog posts that people write and you convert them in word embeddings so what you would do is you'd convert their query into a word embedding and then you would do a dot product against all the word embeddings that you have and then you'd pick the one that has the biggest value and that's what you would you would show first so you basically rank them according to the dot products and that that ensures that you show the most relevant pages first now i'm not saying that this is how google does it but that's just 
a way that's one application that you can use it for right so i hope you enjoyed this introductory video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one